everyone, I'm back with another free video drum lesson. And for this lesson, I wanna do something a little bit different. Dave Grohl played a drum solo at the Glastonbury Festival in 2012, and it was recorded uh, for the BBC. And there's a version of it up on YouTube, um, and I've had lots and lots of requests from people asking me how to play this drum solo. And I was very interested as well, it looked really cool. I wanted to work out how he played it. So this video, we're gonna look at that famous drum solo, that live drum solo that Dave Grohl did. There'll be a link for the original YouTube video beneath this um, video, so you can, you can find it on YouTube if you want to watch it first. Also, you can make sure you check out the um, free PDF that comes with this lesson, teaching how to play uh, the uh, actual drum solo itself, plus the original drum solo on the song Avon, uh, drummed by their original drummer, Alfredo Hernandez. Um, so uh, yeah, you can get the free PDF for that, plus you can also check out the hundreds of other free video drum lessons on my website while you're there. So let's crack on then, let's take a look at the actual drum solo itself first. So the drum solo itself is six bars long and we're counting in four four. That simply means that every bar contains four counted beats, one and two and three and four and. And before the drum solo technically starts, the band and Dave play a set of stabs. So if we take a look at the first bar, we're playing crash cymbal, snare drum and bass drum on one and two and three, five in a row. One and two and three, one, two, three, four, five, however you want to count it. Uh, just, just, just as Alfredo did on the original uh, drum solo, the original recorded version. Dave then continues to play what um, Alfredo originally played. I guess it's like a little tip of the hat to him, because um, it's quite cool as well. Uh, and it's, it's uh, two snare drums followed by a crash cymbal and bass drum. And Dave plays it right, left, then crash. And it moves across the bar and moves across the beats of the bar in a rather cool way, throwing the listener's ear and probably throwing your ear as well. So I'm not going to worry too much about trying to teach you how to count it because that can make it more complicated than it is. You don't need to. You've got the original solo and the recorded version to listen to and memorise it. What I do is I just know to, have to play this three times, starting from the uh of beat three in the first bar. It then moves across into the second bar and the third um, crash cymbal to play falls on the and of three. So we just play it three times. And then we're into the next part. So up to that point, we've got one and two and three. And of course you can play it left, right, left, or left, right, right, wherever, however you want to play, it doesn't really matter, sticking is important. But Dave uses the right, left, right, and he gets his arm right up in the air. Okay, so um, let's now move on to the next part, which is like a six note, sixteenth note pattern lick which Dave plays quite a bit and uses in this live drum solo. So before we take a look at what Dave actually plays, we're going to break down the lick into its basic, simplest form so it'll be easier for you to practice and learn it and understand exactly what's being played here. So the best way to think about it is it's, we're counting in three. One, two, three, one, two, three. And to start off with, we're going to separate the hands onto different drums, make it into a kind of drum beat. Play the right hand on the hi-hat and we're playing one, two, three, one, two, three. The snare drum is played loudly on one and then in between the hi-hats on two and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Try to keep the hi-hat relatively quiet, the right hand quiet. We'll be moving to different drums later on. So you want to have this going on dynamically. Um, The bass drum then falls um, in between the hi-hats on one and two, and also at the end of the lick, uh, the sixth note, between the hi-hats on three and one when you loop it round. So very slowly, um, it sounds like this. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Two and, three and. Just, if that's a little bit complicated for you at this stage, you can take out one of the bass drums and just play, perhaps play the first bass drum in between the hi hats on one and two on the end of one if you like. You could just leave out the bass drum at the end and play this instead. Your right hand's still leading you, still keeping in time. So you can take bits out depending on what you find easier or more difficult. Um, but that pattern again, perhaps a little bit faster now. Oh, no, play, the pro play it properly for you. So 
So a real workout for the bass drum, for if you're not used to playing that linear style of, of drumming, it can be a little bit tricky separating the hands and feet so smoothly, or trying to make it sound smooth. This is what it sounds like when we play it all on one drum. So now if we go back to the actual PDF, what Dave, take a look at what Dave actually plays. Okay, so starting on beat four of the second bar, we play this six note pattern through 16th notes. So we're counting four E and a one E and a two E and a three as we move into the second line, the, the third bar. Start from beat four, remember, four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a. Now, again, this is a section of the song, um, the solo, where if you're playing up to speed, it's really hard to count. Um, so you can just sort of use muscle memory, learn the pattern off by hand, off by heart, off by hand, that's a good one. And um, you, then, you then don't have to worry about counting. You can then just focus on just um, feeling it, putting more energy into it rather than reading and counting. But uh, the first grouping of six, remember we're playing 16th notes, so we're playing four E and a one E. That's the first grouping of six. Starts with a flam. And so every time that Dave plays a flam on the first time he plays it, and that's simply just um, playing a left hand flam, the first note of the six is going to be flammed, simple as that. You don't have to practice looping it, although you could. You want to accent the second left hand note as well. But Dave doesn't loop it with the flam, so you just play it once at the beginning. And the first six we play flam on the snare drum, followed by the bass drum, and then this pattern, right, left, right. Keep all the snare drum notes quiet um, in between the tom hits. And if, you, if you've got the correct sticking going with the correct dynamics, that will happen automatically. Um, so when I'm playing it this slowly, the dynamics isn't really being used very well, but when I speed up, you'll sort of hear how it works. And then for the second group of six, starting on the end of beat one in the third bar, so it moves across the beats in a weird kind of way, um, the right hand, which before we flammed on the snare, is now going to play in unison together between the high tom and the snare drum. Then we play the same bit at the end, right, left, right again. So for the second group of six, starting on the end of beat one, we get one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how I'm going to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, just to make it easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the next grouping, which starts on beat three, it's the same thing again, but we play on the floor tom with the right hand. And then the last of these groupings of six is played on the and of four, the end of bar three, moving into the beginning of bar four. Um, and it's the same as the previous grouping of six, so this pattern again. So another way to look at this PDF, um, which I haven't marked on it, because I don't want to distract you too much from the, the, the notes themselves, but you could see, or you could imagine that um, there's this groupings of six going through 16th notes and starting on beat four of bar two, ending on the E of beat one of the, of the third bar and so forth and so forth. And you can see the accents, the accent, pa the accent pattern gives you a clue as to where each grouping of six is. The first accent note of each two is the first note of the six and then the second accent note of each six is on one, two, three, four, the fourth note. Probably making it sound more complicated than it is. It's basically this, but you're moving your hands around the drums. You just got to learn through muscle memory what drums Dave plays. So here's what, just that little section from beat four up to the uh, end of beat one in bar four sounds like. So you can sort of see how when you speed it up, it uh, changes how it sounds and feels, or maybe not, I don't know, but I suddenly hear a difference when it's played slower. It sounds much more complicated when you play it slowly. And the muscle memory doesn't really kick in at that slow speed either. It's when you, only when you speed it up that the arms learn this motion and can flow it easier, I find. Ironically, it's one of these things that are, are kind of easier to play faster, this, this pattern. Once you've got the basics down, you need to practice it slowly to start off with, the basic six note pattern, but then when you speed it up, if the muscle memory is there, it sh you should find it a lot easier than playing it slow, weirdly. Okay, so 
We're on to bar four now. And at this point, Dave then changes things up. We were playing 16th notes before. That's four notes per beat. One e, uh, one e under, two e under, three e under, four e under. We then move into triplets, a faster rate of notes, so that it sounds like he's speeding up. In fact, he does actually speed up. The beginning of the solo is slower than the end of the solo. He's sped up by a few BPM by the end, uh, which makes it kind of hard for me to replicate exactly what it sounds like, because it does actually speed up. Um, but he moves into triplets, which is a faster note rate. Uh, and we're playing six notes per beat. And you can count it um, many different ways. One of the ways would be one to to, ante to, two to to, ante to. So between one and two, you've got six notes or two groupings of three. And that's probably a more useful way of thinking about it, as you'll see now. So the lick is six notes long. And like I just said, it's probably easier if you think about it as two groups of three, um, because what Dave is actually playing, I commonly call the bottom triplets. Um, a very, very uh, popular lick amongst drummers because it's relatively easy to play but sounds amazing when you speed it up. Um, it sounds like you're doing loads of cool stuff when you're not really, you're playing three notes. Right, left foot, right, left bass drum. Works really well in triplets because we're working in, in groups of threes and sixes so they fit nicely within the beat. And Dave plays the first bottom triplet between the snare drum and high tom. Bass drum straight into the floor tom with the right hand. And if we count the six notes as one, two, three, four, five, six, um, we then rest or play nothing on the fifth note, and then the sixth note we play a bass drum note at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Give those two first notes some welly. I can give all the notes um, some welly to make it sound really cool. Um, okay, so things to look out for with that lick is listen to the bass drum note. It's right at the end of each grouping of three and you can sort of hear it bounce um, at the end of, of each grouping of three. So if you listen to it again, listen out for the bass drum part. Keeps smooth, did, 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 all the way through. So that lick gets played twice, starting on beat two of the fourth bar, and then again on the beat three. So two groupings of six in the second beat, and two groupings, sorry, two groupings of three in the second beat, and then two groupings of three in the third beat. And then from beat four, Dave changes it up to the constant bottom trip. That's right, left foot, right, left foot. We just add in that left hand note. Um, and uh, all we have to do for that last part is just keep the left hand up on the high tom. And all we're doing is worrying about where the right hand note is being played. And he moves the right hand note to create quite an interesting rhythm. Um, so it's probably just easier if, if um, we just take it all in, in one go because it's not really that complicated. Once you've got the basic right, left foot, right, left foot going down, you just got to worry about where the right hand is. So the right hand, starting from beat four of the fourth bar, we get two notes on the snare drum with the right hand, remember. And then the right hand moves to the floor tom for one note. Ooh. And then we play a one note on the snare drum. And then one note on the floor tom. And then it kind of repeats again. Two on the snare drum. One on the floor tom. One on the snare drum. And then one on the floor tom. That's the end of that fifth bar. So starting from the fourth bar, beat four, up until the end of the fifth bar, slowly sounds like this. You sort of see how, how, how the right hand changes the way it sounds as it moves across the, um, the bar. And then for the last bar, it's just floor tom, high tom, all the way to the end. End of, beat, end of the bar on beat four, we're playing one and two and three and... So if you haven't worked out by now, if I, if I haven't made it clear enough, apologies. Um, each of these bottom triplets is taking up half a beat. One and two and three and four and... So they're much easier to count because they're falling with the beats that you count. One and two and three and four and... Beat four though is snare drum and hi-hat being played. Um, so you, your hands have got to do a quick job to... Both hands got to rush back to the hi-hat snare drum. Either play this way or open-handed. I think I like to play open-handed. I'll find out in a second. I can't remember. That way. 
Uh, and we're just going to do a quick hi hat bark, snare drum and hi hat. Uh, I had to I looked down at my feet there. I've got I've got a new remote hi hat for my kit. I'm actually playing um, the way I, I I actually naturally play. Uh, right foot on the hi hat pedal with a remote cable going around to the hi hat, and left foot on the bass drum foot. That's how I naturally play. So. Uh, but because I've been doing it the other way around for so many years for these videos, I had to look down then to see what I was doing. I hope I'll get used to that after a while. Yeah, hi hat bark. Like that. So from beat one of the last bar, we get one and, oh, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So now let's take a look at, um, let me play for you from beat two of the third bar up until the end of the slow low, slowly. Uh, so beat two of the fourth bar, sorry. So we're starting with this lick. Starting from there. Okay, here's what that sounds like. Faster now. And a bit faster. Bit sloppy, but you get the point. Try that again. Um, and we've obviously heard the, the uh, actual version at the beginning of this video, um, and it's pretty pretty fast. In fact, I think it's probably faster, to be fair, to be honest, um, than I actually play it. I, I, Dave Gold's a, just such a good drummer. He, he makes um, this pattern sound so easy to play, uh, so he makes it sound so smooth, but it's really hard to play fast, um, these, these bottom triplets, smoothly, I find. Um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that, that's what that section sounds like. By the way, I just suddenly thought, um, but going back to the, this lick, one way you might want to practice it, going from that bit into the bottom triplets, is to do something like this. So you're simply playing the, um, the, uh, this lick twice, as written on the PDF, and then you're playing two sets of bottom triplets, snare, floor, snare, floor. So that left hand to the second part of this exercise gets introduced and then we play the full bottom triplets. Again, slowly. Just to get used to that introducing, taking out, um, and also you can use it in many other different ways in your playing as well. Once you've learned it, you can use it elsewhere, of course. Okay, so uh, let's have another listen to what the whole drum solo sounds like up to speed. And now let's hear it at a much slower tempo. The whole thing played at a slow tempo from start to finish. And finally, what I want to do is just very briefly take a look at the original drum solo on the album, um, the uh, song Avon, uh, drums by Alfredo Hernandez. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, just because it's a cool uh, drum solo as well. Let's first of all take a listen to, or take a look at me playing the original solo up to speed. So let me just briefly run you through um, the actual drums he hits and in what order and not worry too much about counting it. Don't want to make this video too long. So um, simply starts the same way as Dave Grohl's version. And then we move to this pattern where we play two notes on the snare drum, two notes on the high, drum, uh, high tom, two notes on the snare, again on the high tom, again on the snare. And then the final time we play snare drum and then high tom, 
and then another note on the high tom with either your right or left hand depending on what you want to do um, so it's this grouping of 16th notes we're playing um, a grouping of three two stage arm notes followed by a rest it kind of moves across the beat so the beats of the bar are being disguised because this, this pattern's moving across them in a weird interesting way so again this is it's just simply that's how I like to play it right left left and then it ends with um, some 16th note triplets six on the snare drum six on the high tom and then the last note on the floor tom with the bass drum if you like. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So let's start trying and play the whole thing slowly. There you go. Um, now on the original uh, album version, Dave uh, Alfredo, sorry, um, uh, uh, plays it a lot slower than Dave's live version. So the two versions are different tempos, but you already knew that, I'm sure. So there you go. That's the whole uh, of Dave's version and the original version. Um, hope you found that fun and useful. I, I found it very enjoyable learning it to, in order to teach it to you guys. Don't forget to download the free PDF from the website. Check out hundreds of other free video lessons that I've got up there as well. Um, and you can always email me if you've got any questions. Join my Facebook page, please like it. Uh, join me on Twitter, Google+, all the social accounts, Facebook, of course. Um, and uh, good luck, have fun, take your time, learn the muscle memory, you'll get there. Uh, maybe not quite the same tempo Dave's able to play it, but maybe one day you will with enough practice. So have fun, good luck, happy drumming, toodle pip. I'm leaving now, goodbye.